Oh, hello. Today we are doing a video that is just like a positivity love fest and I'm so excited about it <laughs> because this is the video where I am doing my all-time favorite books roundup for 2020. So last year I do this, I did this last year and I'm like, I like this tradition so long as I think something has changed or it would still be an interesting video. I think that this is a very appropriate video for the week of Thanksgiving because this is my video where I'm gonna talk about my all-time favorite books as of 2020. Last year I did this and there's actually been some changes to the list year over year. Some of it's because I've kind of reimagined how I'm counting what my all-time favorite books are versus how I was thinking about that last year. So I'll talk about that in just a second, but this it's just like a joyful, joyful video because I just get to gush about 10 of the books that at least as of this moment here in the year of our Lord 2020, I would consider to be my all time favorites. So the changes that I made from last year in terms of uh, what could make the list, I decided that I was going to eliminate any books that are a part of what I would describe as a serialized series, meaning that it is a series where really the overall story is one work that happens to be told over the course course of, you know, two, three, five, ten, however many books, versus what I would describe as an episodic series where, yes, they're all in the same world. There is usually some level of like a macro plot happening where, you know, an overall story is progressing, but you could really pick up any book in the series and read it basically on its own terms without having to read the rest of the books in the series. So I do have some books that are in series on this list, but they are all what I would describe as like episodic. So you could just pick them up as is and you would be able to read them just fine. So anyway, enough of my caveating. Let's start with number 10 and work our way up to number one. Number one is, I'm sure, not mysterious if you watch this channel, but at all. But, you know, let's still pretend that there's some level of mystery building here. Okay, a new entry onto the list. Number 10 is The Bloody Chamber from Angela Carter. So what I love about this book, and really it's a collection of short stories that are very thematically linked. They're basically all dark feminist, retellings of classic fairy tales. So like there's a couple of retellings of Beauty and the Beast and those are my favorites, but like Beauty and the Beast, Little Mermaid, whatever, like it's dark, dark retellings of it. And this book just like completely blew my mind. The first time I read it, it really broadened my sense of what I like in short stories. And then just overall the kind of vibe I enjoy, like this is one of the first sort of like thematically dark, it like this had like a very specific philosophical point of view to it that was kind of the first book I really read where that connected with me. And since then, it I feel like has been a taste defining book that opened me up to other books kind of in that same vibe. So like, for instance, I don't think I would have loved the library at Mount Char as much as I did if I had not read and loved and realized that I really loved the vibe of the Bloody Chamber. So this book, I haven't reread that often. I think I've reread it once or twice. And actually, maybe I'm due for a reread now. But it really, I think of it very warmly. It's not a book for everyone. It's not a book I necessarily recommend widely in terms of, I don't know, I just, I feel like there, this is not a book that everybody is going to get into. But for me, it just like really opened me up and like was a taste defining book for me. And for that reason, I do think of it as a favorite and something that I think of very warmly. Another new entry on the list, and actually the bottom few here, I think all new entries technically, but All Systems Red from Martha Wells, <laughs> which is the first introduction of Murderbot. And I, I originally had this like, as number 11, like it had just fallen off. And then I really thought about it and I was like, I don't think that's true. Like I absolutely love this book. It is a perfect book in my opinion, a perfect novella. It is something I'm known for at this point of gushing and like forcing people to read about Murderbot and how they're the sweetest little cinnamon roll in the entire world who's also a murdering robot. You are what you are. And I feel like they're working with what they got. They, I think like thematically, this is great. This is sort of almost like an isolated close circle mystery, but like in an action space adventure kind of form. So plot wise, this is great. I just, I love this book. I love it so much and I push it on everyone. So I, I realized that whether or not I had thought of it as an all-time favorite, I think functionally, at least at this point in my life, it is an all-time favorite and it's in the top 10 of my all-time favorites. So this is number nine. Number eight, another new entry is Hunger by Roxane Gay. I think I mentioned this last year as something that was sort of like on the bubble of making the list. And upon reflection, I used to say that my life in France by Julia Child was my all-time favorite 
favorite memoir, and I just don't think that that's quite true anymore. I bumped it down to number 11. It was in my top 10. I would say that this is. I would say Hunger by Roxane Gay is my all-time favorite memoir. This book really has a lot of all the content warnings in terms of sexual assault, uh, self-harm, etc., etc., but this resonates with me very personally. Like, I relate to a lot of things in this book um, in terms of some of her life story and essentially some of her mental processes, so I connect with it. But I also just love her writing in general, and I love the way that she tells her own story and the command over which she tells it. The writing to me is beautiful. It's very simple, but for me, I love, I think it's beautiful in its simplicity. Yeah, I just, in my heart of hearts. The reality is I think this is my all-time favorite memoir, so this is number eight. Number seven is another nonfiction pick, and that is All the President's Men by uh, Carl Bernstein and Bob Woodward. This slid down a couple of slots because I think I just, I when I'm thinking really about what just all-time favorite books, this is, I think, not quite in the top five anymore, but it is definitely still in the top 10. Um, this gets at things I just love in nonfiction and especially narrative nonfiction. It's investigative journalism, which I love. It is, uh, you know, uncovering a conspiracy. It's very in the like work process. Like I'm a, I'm a nosy, nosy gal and I love finding out how other people do their jobs or like how they work. And so I love that aspect of it. It's political in ways that I love. And this was very formative. I read this when I was, I think a junior or senior in university. And this was very formative to me politically at a time in my life where I was really like, transition in terms of how I thought of my core ideology or like core values and how those manifested politically. Like this book, I think of in addition to a couple of podcasts I started listening to as being very awakening to me in terms of sort of how I thought conceptualized myself as a political person. So still holds a really special spot in my heart. And actually another, a few of these I'm like, I'm due for a reread. This one I feel like I'm due for a reread. It's just wonderful. So number seven here, and then just out of the top five, coming all the way up from being, I think, number 11 last year, I think just reality-wise, number six is The Obsession by Nora Roberts. This book I just love and was, again, a very taste-defining book for me. This book really opened me up to Nora Roberts. Like, I'd read, I think, one or two things from her before that, and I liked them, but this just made me really get what she does well, and it just, like, mm, it's like, mm, let's see here. It's one of my all-time, it's not my favorite mystery. We're gonna see a couple more, but, like, my third favorite mystery ever. It just hits, and I guess my favorite suspense, that's really what this is. This hits what I like in suspense perfectly in terms of the way it's paced, how it is very character driven, how it has a little bit of like a cat and mouse element to it, how it has a big serial killer and like a serial killer copycat component. Like this just hits what I love in suspense so much. And it is a romantic suspense. I like the romance. And what I like in romantic suspense really is that when you get a romantic suspense, you know that means that it's going to be very character driven. That's that's, I mean, I, so I like the romance in it, but really what I'm, what I'm enjoying about what a romantic suspense as a subgenre does is that it remains very character focused and not just action focused. So anyway, all that to say, this just does what I love in a suspense book perfectly. And as you know, if you watch this channel, I love Nora Roberts. Um, I'm still making my way through her oeuvre. Lord knows she's written a lot of books, but she's one of my all time favorite authors. And this really like kicked me off on that journey with her. And then moving into the top five, I realized this year that Pride and Prejudice really should be considered a top five book for me because it's not just that I love Pride and Prejudice and I reread at least chunks of it every year. It's that I love Pride and Prejudice retellings so much and I love the kind of tradition of domestic novels and novels of manners and just the whole tradition that this book represents. I love and so I reread chunks of this and then I'm always up for a really good Pride and Prejudice retelling. So I think that means it really should be in my top five. Not a very like exciting book pick here, but the reality is I think I've just realized it should be there. And then I realized that I was pretty happy with the order that I had my top four in last year. So like, we'll just run through those real quick. The only one I wrestled with a little bit is that I think Brad practically, and then there were none probably should be my number three pick, but I just can't do it. So I'm going to say that, and then there were none by Agatha Christie is still my number four. I not only love this book, but again, kind of speaking to the Pride and Prejudice of it all, I love retelling 
retellings of And Then There Were None, and I love the whole isolated closed circle mystery tradition that this really like inspired. So it's not just this book, it's like all the books like it that have come since, but I can't quite edge it out for my number three pick, which is The Remains of the Day by Kazu Ishiguro. I just have like such tenderness in my heart for Mr. Stevens and his little like emotionally constipated self. I just love him so much. I love, this is my favorite piece of historical fiction that I've ever read. It's so beautifully told. I just, this is a book that I read when I think I was 16 or 17 and I just love it every time I've reread it and it has such a sweet place in my heart. So I just can't, I can't take this out of the top three. So I left that there. Number two is still my all time favorite Agatha Christie book, my all time favorite mystery. And yeah, I just feel really good about Cards on the Table. Continuing to kind of reign supreme over the Christie of it all and over the mystery of it all. I would still say this is my second favorite. It is some, it's like a locked room mystery. So it gives me some of the isolated closed circle mystery vibes. It's like adjacent to that. It reads almost like interconnected short stories and I love Christie short stories, but it's not like it's still a cohesive novel. We get Ariadne Oliver for the first time. We have all these great recurring characters as well as great new like one-time characters in this. And I just absolutely love this. I have such like a visceral like remembrance of the first time I read this because I read it as my first Christie audiobook. And it was when I was moving from my hometown to Washington DC. I was fresh out of university. And I think just this was, I was very emotional about that, but this was like the perfect way to like guide, birth me into my full independent adulthood. So anyway, I just love this book. That's the reality. And speaking of a book with a visceral memory of the first time I read it, this time it was when I was, I guess, 16, maybe 17, and I was on a college visit. I was paying no attention to that college visit because all I was doing was like sticking my nose into the beauty that was Jane Eyre and having my little mind blown, my little heart melted, and my life forever changed. I just, it's just so hard for me to picture a world where this stops being my favorite book. I just, it's not that I, love it emotionally. I also love the ideas in this book and like what it's trying to do. It just engages every part of me as a reader. It, it, and I just don't know that any book ever will fully engage me emotionally, philosophically, artistically, aesthetically. Like it just, it does it all for me and I love it so much. And she reigns supreme yet again. Unsurprisingly, I just, again, I don't, I like would love to imagine what this book is that would eventually dethrone this. Like, like what a book that will be. So yeah, there we go. Those are my all time favorite books as of 2020. And I have to say, I feel really good about this list, like even better than last year's. And some of this may just be because <laughs> I've grown and changed as a person in the last year and my perspective has changed. But I do feel like this list even probably better than last year's reflects really well, not only like my favorites, but also the range of things that I love in books pretty well. Like, I think that this encapsulates me as a reader, this list actually pretty solidly. So that feels nice if you care at all. Hopefully you do if you've watched to this point. But anyway, so that is this year's all time favorite books ever of all time, things I love list. And uh, definitely let me know your thoughts on any of the books I mentioned. Maybe let me know one of your favorite books of all time or maybe a few of them. And uh, let me know that in the comments below. But I think that that will do it for me for today. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below and yeah. I hope you are having an absolutely wonderful day today. If you are in the US, happy Thanksgiving to you today. And I will just talk to you soon. Bye.